Hey friends, you are seeing me in my mother's quilting room, which is probably my best backdrop of the year. I would almost certainly, I would say, I don't know how I'm going to top this one. And um, I'm up in Santa Fe. We are doing another round of family festivities. And, you know, something, you know, it's interesting what shows up because I, I was, I think I was talking yesterday about, you know, we spent, we spent Christmas, the you know, spent actual Christmas day and Christmas Eve with Katie's family in Albuquerque. And of course, my family's right up the road. So now we're here for another kind of round two of Christmas. And it's, it's such a luxury to be able to <laughs> to have the holiday extend like this, and I, I've been joking that Annalise is going to think Christmas happens. It, Christmas happens two days in a row, or takes three or four days to to celebrate because that's her experience so often. Um, and I think you know what. What shows up as I as I go from kind of her family to Katie's family to my family is just this interesting shift in how objective I am in the context. You know, I notice myself becoming less objective. It's 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 and this is not not in any kind of negative way. I mean, I suppose it's always nice to have that feeling of objectivity when I, that, that to me that, you know, that's part of what uh, a meditation practice and a sort of mindfulness practice um, cultivate and, and deliver pretty reliably is a sense of objectivity, a sense of, I am not so enmeshed in what's happening. I'm not so attached either to the circumstances or to the people or to my own emotions in the situation that I'm totally at the mercy of them. I have some objectivity. Um, so it's obviously a positive, or it's obviously, you know, from the point of view of spiritual practice, it's definitely, it's, it's kind of a sign of uh, gaining a measure of freedom to be less and less controlled by our impulses, com in, in, impulses and compulsions in a set of circumstances or in a set of relationships. And that definitely does get mitigated. Like there's something about going into your own family that, that just kind of takes a lot of that away, I think. And, and But this is kind of back to my point from a day or two or three ago where I feel like this practice in the context of our families is so important and it's so... Uh, rewarding if we will if we can actually do it there's a there's a sense of like what because what happens when, when I'll just talk about my experience I mean I sense that this is probably universal for for many people but my experience is that I become I kind of it's almost like I go unconscious although I don't have to necessarily go unconscious for very long but I, it's like I I find that all of a sudden I'm in circumstances that are sweeping me along and then I clock just a, either a moment later or several minutes later or an hour later or a day later, oh, I got swept up in that. I got pulled into that. And that's what happens more in the context of my family than, for example, in the context of Katie's family or any other one that I'm not so enmeshed in, which makes obviously total sense. That's you know, we're, we're heading into the, you know, we're heading basically into like the lion's den of our imprinting. We're hap we're going back into the cauldron where all of that happened. So it, it, it's no surprise that we would find a little bit less c capacity for remove. Um, but again, that's also kind of precisely why I think a family environment is one of the best contexts for spiritual practice you could ask for because all of the things that we carry with us into life all the things that we that we watch in the over the course of our days and, and years 
you know, in our in our lives, not necessarily enmeshed with our immediate family, that stuff is playing out. It's our unconscious programming. It's our patterns. It's our imprinting. It's and it determines our projections. It gives us, to some degree, the arsenal of things that we're going to go out into the world and project off of all the surfaces of the world to then learn, oh, this is what I'm doing, and then become more become more objective, become more conscious of it, and ideally transcend it, you know, gain a measure of freedom from it so that we're not living according to those patterns unless we want to. But but going back into the family is, is almost like it's almost like a um, crash course in our patterns because in our normal normal lives, it's also easier to not reckon with them as much. <clears throat> you know, the people and the kind of immediate emotional dynamics that formed all that and in which those happen, we almost can sort of like let the... We can almost draw a curtain on them and then meet them out as we see fit in our normal lives. And we can kind of dose them. We can decide how, how intensely we want to reckon with this. How closely do we want to look? You know, but in but, but you, you throw us back into our families and it's like, oh, nope, this is just ha like all the it's all happening. It's all kind of like it's all there. We don't get to like we don't get to choose the pace at which those in kind of deeply imprinted experiences arrive and in, so that's why i was kind of saying yesterday or the day before that a break you know we, these are our vacations this is like our time when we're not doing our normal job most of us if we're lucky enough to have some time off over the holidays we get a chance to you know put that down come back to our family and but I was also saying it's actually not a break at all. It's actually it's 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 it, if we approach it from the point of view of a of a of a practice and of an ongoing kind of evolution that we and our family members are on. It's a journey that we're all on together. It's not a break at all. It's one of it's like the most intense time we get. It's one of our and it's therefore also one of the biggest opportunities we get because. We're going to go into those situations. All our buttons are going to get pushed. All of our programming that in normal life we can sort of decide how much to to face it and how much to just not think about it, we lose some degree of control over that because now we're in that cauldron and, you know, it's the, the heat is on. We're, we're there. And I am... You know, I find almost every year, you know, every year this happens, I'm one year older, I've gained some measure of new awareness of myself, and I bring that into the, into the situation, and it's funny because, you know, every time, virtually every time, I mean, I'm, I'm getting to where I now enter with fewer and fewer expectations. In other words, I don't show up thinking that I know how it's going to go or what's going to happen or how I'm going to be. I've kind of lived long enough to, to know that you just don't know. You just never know what you're going to be given. What we're going to receive is the next step. The next layer is going to be peeled off the next, you know, the next pool is going to be dived into and we're going to keep exploring. And I think, you know, it, it's, it's, again, I'm just reminded every year and I'm, and I'm kind of, I'm grateful every time it happens for the fact that I also have a family with it. That's, that's kind of on board for that. We're kind of willing to do that. I know that's probably not everyone's uh, situation and it's definitely a privilege to have, to have that in our family have people who will will go there and and I, you know it's on some level all that really means is people who are really committed to gaining some measure of freedom 
over their patterns. So, you know, it means that being willing to question our own desires, our own wants, our own emotions, all the stuff that we feel makes us who we are at a given moment, which if from the point of view of a, a kind of deep spiritual transcendence is all an illusion. None of it is real and none of it is actually who we are. It's all layers of um, layers of imprinting, nothing that not nothing bad about them, but they're just not who we ultimately are from the point of view of um, you know for what most of the most of the traditions would tell us. <laughs> there's a there's a self beyond all that and when we are all kind of committed to looking at that in our own various ways and leaning into that and willing to let go of cherished things that may have been deeply important to our security or our identity or our self-worth at some point in our lives kind of being willing to reckon with the fact that maybe we don't need to be attached to that in order to have our self-worth or in order to be secure or in order to be who we are. Then you've got a group of people who can actually go into that cauldron, have those intense experiences and, 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 and hold it, hold all of it in a, in the sense of like, being willing to stay there and not look away, you know, because that's the thing that that's the thing that a lot of when a lot of patterns start popping up at once, that's the thing that's it's kind of the first thing that happens is we want to look away because it's intense. It's not always flattering. It's just kind of relentless. It can be it can be almost too much to process. And so we just kind of shut down. Um, and so it takes a kind of rare group of people to want to keep looking to really be willing to step in there and kind of you know it's like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with ourselves that's the only the only opponent if you can even call it that is ourself in the sense of nothing is actually against us all of it is for us so anything that feels like it's against us has got to be some form of illusion within ourselves that we have to face it may mean going into battle in some way it may mean you know drawing our sword and slaying a dragon it doesn't mean that it's all sweetness and light um it just means that it's it's all ultimately serving us it's all ultimately prompting our next step in our evolution it's provoking us down the road and if, you know, at least my experience so far is, even when I can't tell, even when a step feels like, okay, the universe has been on my side all this time until now, this step is finally turned on me. It's against me now, which is how almost all of the steps feel, especially when they're big steps, when they're significant in some way. Even when it feels like that, <laughs> just having that trust and that willingness to breathe, try and get just enough objectivity to be able to manage that intensity and to, and to trust, to have a little, to have that faith of this is serving me, this is serving us, this is serving the world and integrate, you know, absorb, enfold the experience and integrate with, you know, and every once in a while we have to look away, every once in a while it's going to, it's going to prompt us to look away but as long as we're as long as we're on our game we're going to notice oh i'm avoiding and and come back you know like james clear says in his habits book you you're not going to be perfect your habits are never going to be perfect you're going to get bumped off you're going to you're going to miss a day you're going to you're going to break a commitment but the key is not getting your all of your commitments and all of your habits perfect the key is noticing when that happens and coming back just keep coming back Keep making the mistakes and keep coming back. That's all we can do. And certainly, it's a privilege to have a family that's that's in it in that way. So I'm feeling a lot of gratitude for that as we 
kick off Christmas number two on December 26th. But thanks for watching, people. I appreciate you. It's honestly, again, being in a situation like this, it's really beautiful to have, to know that people are engaging with the experience that I'm having. I know many of you can relate. I've even had conversations with many of you. So I know you can relate, but just to, it, it's in, in expressing this, I also come to a new realization of what's really going on and it empowers me. So I appreciate you more than you can know. So much love. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow.